That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Fresh, the, direct <coughs> the directorial debut of Mimi Cave, which premiered recently at the 2022 Sundance Film Festival and will be available to stream on Hulu March 4th, 2022. Directorial debut. Yes, uh, she's done some short work. Uh, she directed a music video for Danny Brown, who, who has a track that's featured in, uh, which is a really good soundtrack in this movie, by the way. I agree. And I did enjoy this film. Uh, it was written by Lauren Kahn, who previously wrote kind of a more standard uh, rom-com for Netflix called Abitha in 2018. Okay. The basic story is there is a plastic surgeon played by Sebastian Stan. He just, I'm going to tell it really quickly. He is a cannibal who has created this organization, kind of like what we see in the hostel movies, where these super rich people want to buy fresh human meat. And in order to sell the freshest meat without having to kill so many people, this plastic surgeon is sort of cutting off body parts and keeping these people alive until he can totally, you know, butcher their bodies. Uh, so Kind of like the herbs at the grocery store that are living in your fridge. <laughs> So the story focuses on one woman played, uh, her character's name is Noah, played by... Daisy Edgar Jones. So she's a really sweet girl. We see that she kind of doesn't have the best luck with dating when one day she's at the grocery store and Sebastian Stan's character approaches her and is very charming, convinces her to give him her number and they go out on a date. And it goes really well. Things escalate very quickly because after like a couple dates, he says, let's go away together to some place, Cottage Grove or... Mm -hmm. So he goes to pick her up. More creepy, it's a secret at first though. Sure. Yeah. So he goes to pick her up, but he's like, sorry, I'm late. Work was busy. Traffic's crazy. Let's leave in the morning, but you can spend the night at my place. So he takes her to his place, which is like some house in the secluded forest or whatever. And it's this beautiful house. He drugs her. When she wakes up, she's chained up in a cell. And he tells her like, yeah, I sell human meat and I'm going to cut pieces off of you until you die. All right. Noah, her best friend, Molly, mm -hmm. who I thought was the best part of the movie. Yeah. Played by Jojo T. Gibbs. Molly is really keeping dibs on her friend. And is very, grows very concerned when her friend doesn't return her calls. Because she can see that, like, uh, Sebastian Stan's character is texting Molly as Noah. And these texts are not reading the way she knows her friend to text. So, in the background, Molly's trying to find her friend. She does get very close to the point where Molly shows up at Sebastian Stan's wife's house. Mm -hmm. But this wife is in cahoots with him, killing these people. So they knock Molly out, drag her ass back to the other house, and have her in a cell where they're going to cut off her meat, too. But it's important to know that Noah had sex with Sebastian Stan's character. Yes. Which is not something he normally does with his uh, merchandise. So she's reading. She also behaves badly, so to punish her, he cuts off one of her booty cheeks. But so while she's in recovery, he gives her a magazine, and as she's reading the magazine, she sees a handwritten note that says, if you're reading this, that means he likes you. So she starts to think, like, maybe she needs to get back in his good graces. And she does so by telling him she's curious about what the meat tastes like. And then he gets very excited because he clearly doesn't have many people to talk to about his cannibalism. So he ends up, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> feeding COVID. He ends up uh, feeding her some human meat. They end up getting close, and she's able to get the upper hand. She kills him. The wife shows up. They kill her. And Noah, her best friend Molly, and another woman who was trapped in the house are able to escape the end. Yeah, there you go. Um, do you want to go through your notes? What's there to say? No, uh, it's... it's at, at one point, it's kind of uh, an interesting take uh, as a... A, a horror film, it's kind of a social issue horror film. Uh, but once the ball gets rolling, you know that it's all kind of, kind of end up. It, it's going to be inevitable that Sebastian Stan will be taken down and the women will triumph. Uh, but I, I think once you get past that, there are a lot of things to enjoy mm -hmm. in it. And especially, I think Daisy Edgar Jones was, is uh, really likable in the mm -hmm. lead role because um, I'm unfamiliar with her roles in 
television work like normal people or cold feet. Uh, but I, I do think Jojo T. Gibbs is the most fun. Mm -hmm. But And I think overall their relationship is kind of the strength of this film. Uh, I do like that Sebastian Stan being part of the <coughs> Marvel Universe is uh, continues to take kind of weird offbeat roles in... Uh, independent cinema, uh, whether it's a Shirley Jackson uh, adaptation, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, or I really, really loved uh, Destroyer with Nicole Kidman, directed by Karen Kusama, or The, the Devil All the Time, or e even Monday, which is a film I really didn't like. He does make daring choices, and, and this is like that. I, I didn't love his characterization, and they're trying to do, there's this 80s vibe in the soundtrack, and there's like this risky business moment that I didn't love, and I, I can't help but think of like Mark Hamill when I look at him. I, I don't know. There's that point where he's cutting off her booty cheek and he he does there's this pan to his face that reminded me of the Chucky doll. I don't I don't know. Like I, <laughs> I'll it, just go through it's my fine, yeah. I'll go through my notes really quickly. So the dating app Noah is using in the beginning beginning of the film is called Puzzle Piece, mm -hmm. which I thought was cute. And she goes on a first date with this guy who named Chad, which is important. Chad is an asshole. Like, it's a terrible first date. And then after Noah, you know, uh, is able to escape this murder house, butcher house, um, she gets a text message from what says maybe Chad, asking, like, what, like... Are you up? Are you up? <laughs> um, so I thought that was funny. The intro is long. It's like a 33-minute intro before yeah. the credits run. I know that's a device... That's usually considered a sign of prestige uh, or, or in the filmmaker's uh, strength in their narrative. I, I thought the movie felt long because, like you said, we know how it's going to go. There are no gags. And my biggest issue with the film probably is Sebastian Stan's character because he's such a... I almost got, like, maybe he's trying to do, like, American Psycho, kind of. And I wish <clears throat> that that character would have been played by a different actor who was more charming, more sweet, and maybe even to the audience along with these women, we think that he is sort of doing this because he's forced to by this organization. Sure. But then in the end we realize not only is this his organization, but he's eating this meat too. Because when we find out that he also eats the meat and it just seems like, well, I mean, that's not a surprise because he seems like a fucking weirdo creep. Well, I didn't love that characterization. His wife being in on it, I guess, is is kind of a gag, but it arrives too early on. It is also a little bit predictable. Uh, but she's played by Charlotte Le Bon, who is the, they're trying to style in a way that suggests that she's maybe with him because he keeps her looking young. Uh, she also has a prosthetic leg, uh, so which made me think that maybe she was one of his victims. Maybe she was, yeah. Uh, which was kind of interesting, but it's. Eh. I, I think as a statement of. Uh, you know, what is it we're, we're doing when we're consuming meat? Uh, is, is some, I've seen it twice now, and it's something that comes up clearly when we're watching them bond over. Right now we're eating a l hope. and well, The name of the person. The name of the person. And, uh, you know, if you could extend that a little bit further to, you know, maybe, you know, eating animals, I think it's also part of the point of this, I think. Um, the house he's operating in is too nice. Because he has sort of like a basement, like, but it's not even a basement. It's a beautiful, like, like nicely decorated with these beautiful cells that have nice decorations. And <clears throat> it seems unbelievable that like he would have had this built and whomever constructed it, the people who installed the plumbing, no one ever thought to question like, what the fuck is this? Well, right. It's almost like it should have been that... That, that facade should have maybe led to a different structure that was an old psychiatric hospital. Something like that. Something yeah. that would suggest that these rooms with just toilets uh, are... The soundtrack's great. Yeah. There's a scene where we first see Sebastian Stan's character preparing the, the meat and that song Obsession is playing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I, I Everything about it worked for me except him. Sure. Again, he, he comes in in that risky business moment. Yeah. That... I, I get how they're kind of have this morbid kind of maudlin tone under like it's almost like a black comedy but I don't even I don't know if it <coughs> really even need that also excuse me also the way there's a the way Sebastian's handling or this character's handling these women and it just seems very loose and risky like he also has he has like a big piece of art on the wall that we see his remote control to lift and behind it are all the personal effects of all these women he's killed 
or some of the women he's killed, which were a lot. That seems really loose and risky and crazy. Then him getting so close to Noah, because as the audience, we're like, even if I didn't know that she was trying to seduce him, it's so obvious that she's playing him. And he seems like he should know. He should know better. Know. And also, I don't understand what, you know, he says that you're a weirdo too, or whatever reason. I knew I liked you because you're also, yeah, a I, weirdo. I, I guess I didn't really sense that in the buildup that he has a moment where he actually thinks that. Right. Um, so the, re the way she's able to escape is she seduces him because now he's inviting her to dinners and he's not like restraining her. They end up having sex and she's about to, or she is performing oral sex on him. When she basically bites his penis off, which um, disarms him for a bit. And she's able to save her friend and the other lady and escape the house. Um, this film does that thing I hate in a lot of movies <laughs> where these people have the chance to kill the bad guy. Yes. And they yes. don't. Like three times. Mm -hmm. They have the chance to kill him, but they just beat him up enough so they can get away. That drove me crazy. Um, oh, finally. <laughs> because... They kill Sebastian Stan's character, but then the wife is out there, and the wife is trying to kill Noah, but then Molly shows up with a shovel. That's the, probably the best line. I, and then what does she say? She, it's bitches like you are the problem. <laughs> yeah, and Molly like basically like decapitates this woman with a shovel. But again, it also suggests that there really is more, maybe an interesting story about this woman. Yes. And Charlotte Le Bon and, and, and how... Uh, she would be complicit to this degree, and I, I, yeah, I almost feel like she should have been the like the main focus, and then these women are just sort of the axillary, right? Because the the group itself that's buying this meat, I really could care that to me. That's like the group in Martyrs, which I, I really could, yeah, the, or or in all the pur Hostile. the Purge films, it's yeah. like you really, it's just like evil incarnate, I guess, and it's kind of you know the banality of evil has. Uh, it's on Hulu, right? Yeah, it will be on Hulu. It will be on yes. Hulu? I would recommend it. Yeah, it was shot by Paweł Pogor, Pogorzelski, a Polish cinematographer who uh, has lensed Ari Oster's past two film, uh, Hereditary and Midsummer. So the look oh. of it is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I think Daisy Edgar Jones is uh, kind of striking in a way that's unusual for a protagonist. Uh, like, like, I feel like you gravitate towards her very easily. Um, and, and again, it, it really is the relationship between her and Molly. Uh, that I think is the strength of the film. What would you give it? I would give it three out of five. I would give it three out of five as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm.